I filled up his toilet with ice, and then I took a big dump on top of the toilet <laughs> ice. Like a massive dump. This is the grossest podcast. And then we turned up the heat and closed the door and walked away. Are we going? Yeah, we're going. Okay. So we were going to talk about something else this episode. I was going to talk about... Take the hair off of me. Gross. I don't have a thing for hairs. I don't like them. It all started when I was younger. I had a hair in my salad one time. It's or gross. Food, and now I have a phobia for it. That's really gross. I had a fingernail in my tacos once. And that was gross. Do you want to know what's gross? I just had a sickness two months ago. It was called hand, foot, and mouth. Mm-hmm. And I had never heard of this before. It rocked my world. Like I was on my ass for a month. My hands hurt. My, that's why I didn't leave the house for like Did a month. Did your kids have it too? They had it. A, I got it from them, but they had it a little bit. Like a little bit. I thought it was what babies and old ladies I thought so get. too. And I got it. You get it once in your life. Sweet. And I got it. And my kids got it a little bit where they had like a couple sores on their hand. And like their mouth hurt a little bit. And they had a couple. I had... My whole hands were just like covered with dots and my whole feet were covered and they're painful and it feels like needles are sticking into your hands and feet Yeah. for like a fucking month Mm -hmm. and then it goes away, which is fine, but then your skin peels off. That's gross. And it was so incredibly gross. I didn't leave the house. I am, when I did, I would like felt like a leper. So (laughs) people would want to shake hands and I would like do like... (laughs) <laughs> like the old lady, like the old lady. I wouldn't like show them my hand. <laughs> oh yeah, there'd be church peace be with you. I'd be like, I wouldn't touch anybody. I felt so gross, and so the skin would peel off your hands, and it was the most disgusting thing in the world. But the cool thing was my feet, because your skin peels off your feet too. And my feet had been beat up from hockey, and there was a lot of calluses, and they were really roughed up. And literally, my whole heel cap, I peeled right off one day that's gross and it was the like big, thick skin on the, the back thick of your skin foot. on the bottom of your foot the whole thing i just peeled off Ew. and underneath it baby smooth baby smooth it was like i went All to right. some like really cool spa asian spa and just like they did, they went to asian? work i always throw a little bit of racism <laughs> in my podcast for some reason and they just went to town and they had like do whatever it was so it was so great yeah so anyways that's, then you got the shits oh i did have so we went out to dinner. John Aikens here, my, my good friend. Hey, everybody. Um, so we went to dinner, and I had... What happened? So I you had... had the shit, so you had to poop. It was, the story's a little bit longer than that. So I went and played hockey one night, and I came home, and that day I had gone to the store to buy meat because I wanted to buy sandwiches. So I went and bought turkey, and I saw they had prime rib, but it was like sixteen ninety nine a pound. And I was like, I don't want to spend sixteen ninety nine a pound. So I saw they had bologna, That's which gross. I love bologna. And so I was like, okay. But then they had garlic bologna, which I never tried. So I was like, give me a half a pound of the garlic bologna. It'll be good. From a really good butcher in town. Not going to name any names. <laughs> I was going to ask. I get home. <laughs> it's the one right down the road. Okay. Um, I get home after hockey. It's like 1030. I make two big sandwiches. Boom. Turkey and salami, eat it, fine. Eat the bologna, get in bed. I immediately turn to Danielle, something doesn't feel right. My stomach is not feeling well, and I think it was the bologna sandwich. Yeah. And I had a little thing going on that weekend where I was going on a retreat. I was going to, you know, I had to spend the night, and and I I couldn't be distracted. And the next morning, I woke up and just absolutely destroyed my toilet. (laughs) And it was terrible. Like three flushers. Like, Like it's the real deal. Like, literally, Danielle was in the kitchen and the toilet's right off the kitchen and she's like was that the sink <laughs> and i was like no, it was my, no i was like no it was my butthole this is the most embarrassing moment of my life and so oh we i was like geez i was leaving for that retreat in like an hour and i was like i can't be doing this on the retreat <laughs> because it's just not like i have to focus i can't be constantly running to the toilet so i load up on a modium i chug a bottle of pepto-bismol chug it it was like a which is also good for your body. Very good. It's very good, especially for your body. Mm-hmm. So and I 
and it worked a little bit. I had a couple movements when I was there. <laughs> we call them DMs, bowel movements. And so I had two or three while I was there. I was there for like two, almost two days. Luckily, they had like a the women's bathroom open for us so I could use the women's bathroom. Oh, yeah. So I just like, again, crushed the toilet two or three times. No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> I had a poster <laughs> at my wall when I was a kid. No regrets. It was a no fear poster. <laughs> So anyways, uh, how we get on this tangent? Um, We're talking about you had to go to poop. So I, I come home and I think, you know, the, it's going to work itself out. Mm -hmm. It's going to work itself out. So it was like two days, three days, four days, five days. So I'm like, man, this is not working itself out. That was some out. hella baloney. And so I'm like, okay, I need to go see the doctor because it had been seven days. It had been Thursday to Thursday. And we went to dinner on the Friday. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I need to go see the doctor. So I went on Friday. The guy's like, okay. It doesn't sound like you have Crohn's. It doesn't sound like anything. Well, let's get Did they make you shit up. in a bucket? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they give me the whole setup. They draw my blood and they give you like a, a test kit to go home with. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so it's a bucket that fits on your toilet and you take a dump in it. <laughs> and then you have to fill up the vials. <laughs> and so I'm like, this is great. I'm like, this is going like to be a great little day. butter knife. No. They, so like the, these, there's three little vials and one big one. And the little ones, they have these little teeny, teeny, teeny tiny spoons. Like I'm talking like smaller than your fingernail. Oh, like your pinky man. finger. It's tiny. <laughs> probably a third of that. And so you take a shit in this bucket and it's all water. And you have to fill up these vials to a certain line. And oh, you're sitting no. there. And it's just glamorous. Like, it's just like, yeah. I'm just like, ugh. and so I'm like trying to dig around for like chunks to make it fill up faster. <laughs> and there's not many chunks. So I'm just like, come on, chunk. Okay, got one. And like pumps it up a little bit. Yeah. And so you do all three of those and you got to fill up the big one and then you take it and then they test it. So this whole time I'm still like I'm having diarrhea and I don't know what's going on. And the doctor told me something interesting. He said, you should never take Imodium. Why? Never take it. He said it messes up your digestive system. He said you only take it if you go to Mexico and you come back and you're literally just like. <sighs> yeah. And I thought that's what was happening with me. But he's mm -hmm. like, no, like you ate something like never take Imodium. It messes up your digestive tract. Never take it. He said, just do Pepto-Bismol. Really? If you're going to take something away from this podcast. That's a good one. Take that away. John Scott life lesson. So just Pepto. I thought you had like a tapeworm. Or something. Or does the tapeworm do the other tapeworm thing? Tapeworm does it's the like other way. It goes the other way. You're you just not, don't. You're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. So anyways, we go to dinner and I'm telling John this and we're having this nice dinner. And then can you please tell your story? What did I, what, about my, my butt zit? Yeah. No. Didn't you play a prank on somebody? Oh yeah. Tell me your butt zit story. I had a butt zit. So we're at, we're at dinner and I tell my story and he's like, oh, I got a funny story. Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a butt zit. I, like, I was singing. All right, so I used to work at this architecture firm, and I, I spent most of my day sitting down, and it was like an hour and a half away, so I had to drive there. So I'm like 15 hours in the car, and I got this zit on the side of my butt, and it was like right on the spot where you sit, and so it's just super uncomfortable. Oh, so I I'm, thought it was in the crack. Well, it was kind of on the crack. It was on the edge of the crack. Okay. I mean, it was in a spot you don't really want to talk about. And so I had to spend pretty much the whole time kind of leaning to the side. Shannon and I, my wife and I went out to dinner and you couldn't, as you know, it's just really uncomfortable. Like you had a big wallet. giant wallet. Okay. And so then I went to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh, we need to get this lanced open. This is something that we can't take care of. So I had to go to an outpatient surgeon who, by the way, is now running for a state representative uh. in Indiana. Uh, a nice guy named Don't Brad Trump. Barrett. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, and so Brad uh, has me sit on this table kind of like like this. Like, <laughs> if you can't see, he's got his elbows on the table and he's <laughs> propping up his back like he's this is the most presenting vulnerable position. His... And then they, and my, yeah, I mean, like my butt's up in the air and then they press the button and the whole table just kind of lifts and I'm like... <laughs> And then um, I think that's great. It was great. And then they proceed to <sighs> cut your butt, cut it open, and drain it. And oh. this is—we were telling the story at like the nicest restaurant I've ever been in. I love that. I can just picture your ass just going. <laughs> it's just like you're going to get violated. <laughs> what was the other story though? You said you were going to—you were talking about another butt story. You sh gave your friend. Um, oh, that was really pills. mean. I felt really bad about that. Yeah, yeah, we put X lax in a fridge drink, and but then, then but then we thought it was like in the movies where it just like happens right away. Release. But it didn't, and we were like, "Oh, well, that was a dud." 
And so we did it again and it still didn't happen. We're like, well, that sucked. Uh, and then the next day we woke up and we're like, where is he? He's not here. And then we found out that, you know, we called him like, hey, what happened, man? Where are you? And he's like, man, did you guys wake up with horrible shits too? <laughs> and we felt so bad. And then we'd like a year later, we confessed and told him. What oh, we, what it's so happened. funny. That's, anyway. I had a prank. I played a prank one time when I was in Chicago. We would prank each other back and forth. Patrick Sharp was one of the big pranksters. So he would get me and my roommate was Brian Bickle. So he would do stuff to us and we would get him back. So one time we were on the road and he he got our room key and like soaked our beds. With water? With water. So soaked them. So we, we went in and we tried, you know, you go to jump in the bed. It's soaking wet. I'm like fucking that Sharpie. Sucks. <laughs> and so I was... And they That's went a out, good prank. We knew he was out to dinner and I'm like, here we go. Like we're going to get him. And so I went to his room I filled up his toilet with ice, and then I took a big dump on top of the toilet <laughs> ice. Like a massive dump. This is the grossest podcast. And then we turned up the heat and closed the door and walked away. And so the idea behind the ice is you can flush it as much as you want, but the ice just floats. Uh -huh. And so the shit just stays there, and you can't move it. Uh huh. And so after we pulled the prank, we went out for dinner at the restaurant we were at. Just to just to show our face, just to be like, oh, we're out. we're not pranking you, you know, we're we're here, and so we go back because they finished first, and we go back afterwards, and we're like, I wonder what happened, and so we're kind of just walking around the, the hall a little bit, and I think it was in Columbus, and we go in our room because we had new rooms because we needed new beds, we go into our room and we're like, I go, what's that smell? And I'm like, shit. And so I knew right away Sharpie knew it was us. Oh, no. And he had, so he had put the shit that I had shit on my pillow. What? <laughs> and cranked up the heat and then oh, soaked no. our beds again. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, I, how does I, he get into your rooms? You, they just go down to the front desk and say, hey, I lost my, my wallet to my room. And uh, I have a room key. And it's, it's so easy. It's so incredibly, it's too easy. Because mm -hmm. I can literally go, even this day, if I can go anywhere and be like, hey, all you need to know is the guy's name. Yeah. Like, can I get my room key? Oh, they don't know any know. better. They don't know the players. Patrick yeah. Sharp. That's all I did. Yeah. Like, they're like, okay, whatever. Stupid hockey players. And so he, yeah, I, I just like to picture him picking up my shit in a bag and carrying it down the hallway. That's, that's what I like to envision Patrick Sharp doing that. <laughs> but yeah, that was one of the best, better pranks we've had. And it stinks too. Like, you'd be surprised. Did you ever get him back? No, like we cut each other's laces and sew our pocket shuts and sew our pant leg shuts and stuff. And, but nothing, that was like the ultimate, I think, that we did. That was the best one. 